Hey y'all, welcome to or welcome back to B-Rad Garage. Today we're gonna get back on our Jeep YJ project. Um, this was a project we're trying to take a roller Jeep and make it into kind of half a Jeep to pull behind a Jeep. I know, it sounds kind of goofy, right? <laughs> but we're gonna see what happens. Hey, um, I just wanna say I really appreciate y'all liking, commenting, subscribing. A ton of y'all aren't subscribed to the channel and I get it, but man, subscribing really helps me out a ton. So if you like the content, please consider subscribing. It, uh, it's, it's a big deal for me, so thanks a lot for everything y'all do. Um, all right, y'all, let me hush and see if we can't make this thing be rad, everybody. All right, so if you can imagine, this was a full roller Jeep as far as the front. Had front fenders, hood, grill, everything else. I actually took the grill and made like some wall art out of it. It's pretty cool. Um, but this was a roller that had everything had been stripped off of it. Basically nothing was in here no powertrain no doors no roll cage so the goal is kind of to be this chunk of it still look like a jeep have doors a hard top would be preferable and another roll bar and then take the frame rails and turn them into the uh, into the the tongue of the trailer and to hook it to my other jeep now as far as the interior of this jeep again it did have a steering column and other things and pedals i took all that stuff out but today's goal is gonna be to knock off some of this old paint. Somebody must have done what I'm planning on doing and kind of laid down some paint as a primer. Cause it's like a, I don't know, uh, beige or light tan kind of color. And uh, we just got a few little supplies here and we're gonna see what we can't do to knock off some of this old paint and then get started on adding some new. So let's, uh, let's take a look at our supplies for today, y'all. All right, y'all. Sorry if the sun's making this kind of awkward, but just kind of want to show y'all what I'm using today so I got me a new pair of gloves from Harbor Freight. I really like these gloves. They're, I mean, it's not sponsored or anything, obviously. I got no sponsors. But um, it's just mesh stuff that's kind of light to get air through. But these little impacts, man, they really help. And then the grippers on the bottom. So they're pretty handy. And I, I know they're less than 10 bucks. They might even be less than eight. But anyway, um, I've got my drill with a cup brush on it. Trying to get up in some corners and whatnot. And oh, there goes an acorn. I've got a paint scraper just an old ratty angled one and then i couldn't find my regular wire brush so we're going to see how this little uh this little kind of hand palm scraper one works especially with gloves on i do have my sander just my little portable sander that's on my uh my craftsman and i've got i think five cans of this rust-oleum paint and primer i just want to put some flat black on here which looks like what somebody else had already tried to do um but yeah that's kind of our uh kind of our stuff for the day you could probably do everything i'm doing with just the hand tools just gloves a scraper and a brush but i'm going to try to cheat with the cut brush and i might sand with the sander i might not that might be too much for today because i'm just trying to kind of clean this up so anybody that knows how to paint which is not me by the way everything about painting is in the prep work like under here all this dirt and junk over here, dirt and junk. This thing needs to be like leaf blowed out. It needs to be pressure washed, knock off all this loose stuff, really get this stuff clean before you start messing with it. What I'm gonna do, which is not the right thing, is I'm gonna do, you know, my brush scraping, all really the rough stuff, and then I'm gonna leaf blow it out, see what it looks like. Hopefully the weather and everything cooperates and I can wash it. But if not, this may not be a mat, well, not, it will not be a masterclass in how to paint. It is gonna be a hometown DIY if you just wanna get some paint on something because it's better than nothing. <laughs> oh yeah, we still got a huge hole for the trans tunnel. We gotta figure that out too. All right, y'all, ain't nothing to it but to do it. So let's, uh, let's get after this it. This angle's a little better. Let's just kind of see what it looks like just scraping on this loose stuff because it looks like somebody did just like me and didn't really prep that well. And that's why this is all chipped. So if you had your scraper, this big stuff, see it just kind of falls off. And the stock paint underneath here is staying on there pretty good. Um, this little scrubby wire brush. Um, doesn't knock it off quite as easy digs a little deeper this is obviously a pretty rough brush um so i don't know that might benefit me in the way that it'll knock off some more of the paint below it so i think i'm going to take the scraper knock off the biggest stuff 
Or well, let's see what this does. Okay. You can see what I'm doing. Am I messing with y'all? Okay, good. Okay. So it looks like for these big chips and chunks that the old scraper is going to be the way to go. So I guess I'm just going to crawl around in here and try to knock off as much as I can with this. And then I don't know, that cut brush is finer. Maybe I try to knock stuff off with the cut brush. I uh, I don't want to bring this down to some kind of primer way, way down, but I also don't want big um, chunks where it's not going to paint over it. So I think I'll probably put it on speedy fast camera mode and uh, just kind of see if we can make this thing look a little different. All right, y'all, so I got lucky and this three inch scraper fits perfectly between these little ridges. So this was really handy for coming in between here and knocking out the loose stuff. The cup brush, oh, there's my apple. Sorry, my apple's in the shot there. If y'all aren't eating apples, man, give them a shot. Fiber, sugar, are good for you. Plus they're tasty. Anyway, uh, three inch scraper in between here is great. Um, it was okay at getting the angles cup brush really seemed to shine as far as on top here as well as beside these little ridges they really kind of knock stuff off and this is such a rough brush um it just doesn't do a whole lot i think it's going to be handy down here when we get into these little crevices. can y'all see that maybe down here down here there's crevices so there's indentions in here so maybe it'll be handy there but yeah all in all going pretty good I know you can't see a ton of difference, but I've knocked off a ton of the uh, the loose stuff. So I'm gonna finish my little apple here. I think these are Fuji's, delicious. Finish my little apple and then we'll jump back on it. All right, y'all, got the old garage sale leaf blower lawn master we've had forever that just keeps on working. Um, just gonna kinda leaf blow all this junk out of here. I've went through and really think I found all the screws and whatnot. Probably be better if I had my shop vac, but I don't have it out here right now. So we're just gonna try to knock this stuff off and um, see what it looks like when we get done here. I'll probably time-lapse this clip because the sound is gonna be awful. All right, y'all, I think the bed back here is quote unquote ready for paint. Now, again, full disclosure, this is not how you do paint. This is paint is all in the prep work and this is not prepped correctly. Also full disclosure, I did go back through here and run with my little orbital sander to try and knock off some of this. These are all different levels. These are higher than here, higher than there, etc. So this is not the right way to do this but I'll tell y'all why I'm doing it this way, whether it's right or not. So I wanna put something on here to stop rust from continuing because this thing has to live outside, right? Also, the end goal is to have the bed liner type material and it is pretty good at kind of self leveling and covering up imperfections like this. So we're just gonna spray some cheap Walmart paint primer combined flat black on here and then we're gonna start with this section so we can kind of see some change and see some difference here. So let me get all my paint and stuff and we'll get to work. Oh man, the painting sins continue. So you see like on that part up here at the top of the Jeep where you probably don't wanna paint, you wanna paint under here, but you don't wanna paint up there. That's where you would put painter's tape. And if you had that, the blue tape. 
something like over here as well. So what I did was I took off the trim pieces that were there. Probably going to get some overspray on that, sadly. And we're also outside, which is usually a no-no. We don't have any kind of blockage of the wind, etc. So I'm just going to be spraying in between little wind gusts. It's not crazy out here, but yeah. So we're going to do our best not to crazy overspray up here and to try to get up in here. I, uh, I think y'all figured out by now that uh, we're doing just good enough on this one. <laughs> just good enough get some paint on something till we can get like some roll up bed liner or something on here so let's uh let's go ahead and get our fancy rust-oleum walmart paint and get going all right y'all if you're wondering why my paint has a uh hat on it also this is just paint and primer flat black rust-oleum it's because i broke this finger a few years ago and this knuckle and this top joint don't work super great and these little spray gun tops are super handy for me. You can actually use two fingers to pull the trigger. So that helps a lot, kind of not hurting that, that digit. So I think they're worth it. You can't get up in every little tight space or whatever, but for another three or four bucks, and uh, for me, they're super handy. All right, y'all, this might be a listen to what I say as opposed to what I do. But when you're spray painting, you want to make one pass and then when you come back, you want to lay just a little bit of the paint over just a light overspray over the other side. Um, hopefully, I'll be able to do that where y'all can kind of see and it kind of makes sense. But again, doing the best I can with what I have here. And I have never claimed to be a painter. So let's see what we got here. Okay. Well, there's one. Looks different at least. Not great. And you can see what I'm talking about all, already. The difference in levels, lower here, higher there, etc. So let me just kind of get y'all off to the side and uh, let me put my very untalented spray painting skills to work here. All right, y'all, even without it dry, you can tell this is not how you want to do this, right? <laughs> like we talked about the high spots, the low spots. Now, if you look, I've got some streaks in here. Again, I'm going to come back. These are light coats. I'm coming back again. But you can tell the difference in a smooth surface that was minimally prepared, and it still looks way better than leaving these big chips. So I know it can be a pain, but if y'all can, take your time and do the prep work it really is worth it i just uh just didn't have all the right stuff with me today and honestly just didn't didn't think this was worth it but it probably was it usually is worth it when it's hard because doing the hard thing is almost always worth it all right let's let this dry for a minute and then we'll hit it again all right y'all like i say you can see some gaps in here we're going for the second coat now it's dried about an hour or so but big difference from here um probably not going to film the rest of this if i do it might be a time lapse i don't know um not that this is really interesting or anything i'm sure but gonna have to kind of pry off the spots there gonna have to do a little more work up here to get it kind of ready to be painted but uh we're gonna go as far as our five cans of paint will take us why did i get five cans because i did some sort of math and knew how much i would need absolutely not i uh I just bought five cans, so I don't, I don't know why. There's no real reason. I'm sure they have a square footage they can spray, and I could have figured that out, but I did not. So, yeah, we'll put one more coat on this, kind of give you all a look towards the end here when we're actually, uh, quote-unquote, done. We're going to continue to do minimal, not correct paintwork prep, and then minimally, um, 
minimal work paint as well <laughs> oh man but it's got to be better than this right all right y'all our thought process was spot on this cut brush is great for getting into these like grooves into down here i'm sure y'all can see how much junk it's knocked off now is this perfect heck no still gonna have to blow it out uh washing it would be the best thing blowing it out getting all this stuff out of here and um hitting this with a coat of paint but this been through one battery starting on my second this thing has been a huge help on all these bumps and humps and jumps and like we thought it's been fantastic in these grooves you can see all that loose trash that it's knocked out so i'm gonna get back at it all right got a wild hair and the uh gate closed and it looked like a diamond in the goat's rear when it was sticking out all khaki tan or beige or whatever this is so i painted it y'all saw some overspray obviously but i put that little stopper bar back there and it looks way better as in all black um did get some overspray on the outside there but it was so light i think i can get it off with just a little bit of um paint thinner and whatnot already got some trash and stuff on here not the end of the world so this is four cans of a single coat i did just go with a single coat today started running out of daylight and you know got to go between coats and have more time and i just didn't have the time today but i gotta say i know it's the old facebook marketplace wash it and take pictures real quick because if you were to look in up in these corners obviously nothing is perfect but hey way better um put the trim pieces back on i do want to paint those but i wasn't sure if black or something is going to go better with the exterior paint scheme later if we change that so yeah i think that's uh i think that's all the doing here today it's uh Still pretty dirty on the outside, but man, it'll look pretty neat. Um, we'll try to do better. On places I knew I would have overspray, like down here, I wanna try to get some tape, get some cardboard, do things a little bit more the right way on stuff like that. But yeah, that's, uh, that's where we're at, y'all. I think we're getting closer and closer to making this thing be rad, everybody. So now that we got it painted, uh, just wanna show y'all, this is our removable floor we're gonna make. Obviously, we gotta cover up the transmission tunnel and the hump there. Um, I cut a notch out of this plywood here, tried to kind of mold it to here as best I could. It's not perfect, and I keep calling it like a draft or a first run, but knowing me, we're probably going to use this one. <laughs> but yeah, so there's just some two by fours underneath each side. It's actually pretty sturdy, pretty solid, and it gives you, if I'm not mistaken, it's three foot across, three foot by six foot, I believe, of uh, in the middle space. And since we're really shooting for like, you know, luggage and um beach stuff and stuff like that it, it doesn't have to be like crazy but i kind of like this idea the um uh, the piece is the right size if you're wondering why it doesn't go forward anymore it's the right size to be able to take it out of the door frame uh, if you just open up a door because i thought it could be possible that we don't need it sometimes or we don't want it there and then you can take it out but yeah all in all i think that's pretty neat now it looks like the jankity piece now that everything's nice and painted but uh it used to look like the good piece <laughs> and yes it's scrap you can tell by looking at it i wasn't about to start out with a with a fresh piece of wood man that stuff's expansive hey y'all full day today man perfect heck no better heck yes that's sometimes that's all we're shooting for y'all um i'm just trying to do stuff get better learn every day y'all try and do the same you're never gonna know till you give it a shot and you might screw it up but there's 99% of the time there's a way to reverse whatever bad thing happened. You get overspray, there's paint thinner, et cetera, et cetera. You, you can figure it out. So y'all do your best out there. I'm really liking how this project's coming along. It has been difficult as heck to get roll bar doors and hard top for anything less than big money that I really don't want to spend on this thing. So I'm still waiting on those big parts. I really think our next step is going to be trying to get this cleaned up and made into the tongue trailer portion of the Jeep. And uh, yeah, that's where we're at today. It's been kind of a long one, but I've loved it. I enjoy doing this stuff. Hope y'all get a kick out of it too. If you like the content, please consider subscribing. Now let me hush and y'all get out there and make it be rad, everybody.